Hi there! In this video I'll show you how to install Virtual Machine Manager on Debian 11 and how to use it so you can connect to your remote QMU KVM hypervisor. If you don't have a QMU KVM hypervisor you should watch my video from a couple days ago on which I'm showing you how to install it on headless Debian. So the first thing that you want to do is go ahead and open your terminal and then you can run apt install vert dash manager there's another package we also gonna need it's called ssh dash ask pass once you have these two installed you can go ahead and start your virtual machine manager so you can just go get it from here and double click on it to open it or what you can do is you can just type vert dash manager in your command line and that will open it for you all right so once you have virtual machine manager open you want to go ahead and connect to your qmu kvm hypervisor to do that you're going to click on file then go to add connection and then here we're going to give it um, the user that will log in in my case i'm going to use root since when i build the server i use my root user and here you can give the ip address of it mine is 192.168.04 and then you can click on auto connect that way next time you open it, it will automatically connect to it once you do this you'll be prompted to confirm the fingerprint so you can just say yes here and then the next screen you'll be asked to enter your root password and there you go i connected to my hypervisor and as you can see i have one machine running this is the machine that we built in our last video from the command line all right so the next thing what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and install windows server 2022 so i've already pre-downloaded that on my uh, qmuk AVM server. So if I go here and go to details and I go to storage, if you remember in the last video we created this ISO directory and the VMS directory and so in the VMS I have my pop and then I have the server 2022 that I've already downloaded. So if you want to do that you can go get it from Microsoft website or if you're going to be using a different operating system you should go to your server and download it there and just put it in your ISO folder. All right so I'm going to close this for now and I'm going to go click here on create new virtual machine and then here I'll be using an ISO so you can just keep this checked and here I'm going to select my ISO so again I'm going to go to my VMS directory oh sorry I'm going to go to my ISOs directory and here I'm going to select the one with the with the server and then the next thing I want to do is here I'm going to specify the operating system so I'll say Windows and I'm going to select Windows 2019 since 2022 is not available I don't think it really matters but I usually select the latest one that's there so I'm going to do forward and I'm going to add a little bit more RAM so 096 and maybe a couple more CPUs and then forward so here you're going to select your disk now if you just keep it the way it is it's going to put it in the default directory and I like to keep it in my VMS directory so I'm going to click on select or create custom storage then click on manage and here I'm going to go to my VMS directory because that's what I want my volume to be and I'm going to click on the plus sign here so I can create a new one you can change the name of it I'll just keep it the way it is and the format I'm going to click on the raw that way the performance is better so I'm going to change the size of it I'll make it 50 gigs then I'm going to click finish now once you have it created you make sure it's selected and then you can click on choose volume and it will be added here and then you can go ahead and click on forward here you can change the name of your virtual machine I'll just keep the default that it recommends for me and then make sure you click on this check here because you want to go and make some changes right before you start your machine okay so I'm gonna click here and then click down on this drop down and change this to bridge device and if you uh, watch the previous video we created our bridge when we created our bridge we call it BR0 so I'm gonna use that name here and that way our machine will be accessible from our local network okay so BR0 and then you can go ahead and click on finish and that's gonna bring you into your virtual machines property page and here you can do do some last changes and confirm that everything looks the way you want it in my case what I want to do here is I'm gonna go ahead go to the, the display settings first and then here I'm gonna change this from spice server to VNC server and then here the listen type I'm gonna select address and then local host only make sure you do that I'm gonna apply my changes and then the next thing that I'm gonna do is I will go ahead and add another CD-ROM in which I'm gonna plug in the the Windows drive drivers um, and the reason I'll do that is because I'm going to be choosing a vert IO drivers for my devices because the performance with, this is, with it is much better. So I'm going to go ahead and click on add new hardware and then here I will go in and select storage and then on this device I'll say CD-ROM 
and then manage. And then in my ISOs, I have an ISO file with the Windows drivers. Now I've already pre-downloaded those drivers, but in the description of the video, I will put a link from where to get the drivers. And again, the drivers and the Windows have to be on your hypervisor. So in my case, it's the server that we built in the previous video. I'm gonna click and choose volume. And since we're gonna be using the virtual drivers, I'm gonna go ahead and for my disk here, I'm gonna use the virtio drivers. And for my network, I'm also gonna use virtio. IO. Again, the performance is much better than staying with whatever the default is. I'm going to click apply and then I'm going to go ahead and start my virtual machine. Here you're going to have to enter your password and the installation will begin. Here you click next, install. On this screen you can select this one. I'm going to do standard evaluation desktop experience. If you want to do the data center, I guess it doesn't really matter. Do next, then accept next again and then custom install and as you can see here it doesn't show me my disk and that's because I choose virtio drivers and those are not loaded yet so I'm gonna go here on load drivers and I'm gonna browse to my disk and this is the virtual driver disk that we inserted so I'm gonna select on it and here I'm gonna look for storage drivers and this is Windows 2022 so it will be this directory here then I can click OK and then next and that will install it for me. And in the next screen, uh, my disk will show up so I can go ahead and install my windows. All right, as you can see, my disk shows here now. So I can go ahead and proceed with the installation. But first, there's one more thing I want to do is I'm going to load my network drivers too. Since if you remember, I changed my network drivers to Virtio as well. So again, you go here, you select your disk with the drivers and that will be the network drivers will be this one. And then I'll select the Windows 22 and then click OK. And next, and this should install the network drivers. Now, if you forget to do that or if you miss some drivers, you can always insert the CD-ROM in your Windows once your Windows is booted and you can just load the drivers from there like you're installing them on a, on a physical machine. So now that I have drivers for network and for disk storage, um, I can go ahead and proceed with the installation. I can click next and this is going to take about 10-15 minutes and I'll be back with you once it's done. And once installation is completed, your virtual machine will auto restart. You're going to be asked for your password again. And again, this is the root password for your QMU KVM server. And here you're going to have to set up your administrator password. Finish. And I'm here, I'm going to send control out delete command so I can log in. And once you're logged in, the server manager should automatically start. You're going to want to allow remote desktop connection. That way you can RDP into your server. So we'll go here to local server settings. And then on the remote desktop, you want to click here and then allow. OK. And OK again. And that way you allow the remote desktop connection. And you can refresh. And you can see your remote desktop is enabled now. Then I'm going to go ahead and close the server manager and I'm going to open my command line. So I'm going to click here and type CMD and I'm going to do if config, I mean, sorry, IP config to get my IP address. And as you can see, 192.168.0.103, this is an address from my local network, which means my bridge is working. But just to prove it, I'm going to open my remote desktop and make a new connection to connect to the server. So that will be here at a PC. And we said 192.168.0.203. And I'm connecting, I'm using a Mac, so I'm using the Microsoft Remote Desktop tool to connect. So uh, here, I'm gonna go to display and I don't want it to start in full screen. And I'll say maybe, and I'll just do this one if I keep it on default display, it's going to be too small. So I'll just keep this. And you can do any settings you want here. I just This is just my personal preference. This, and then I'm going to try. Oops, I had the wrong address. So I have to do 103 here, actually, right? And save. Double click. It's going to ask you for your password. And there you go, I'm remote desktop into my brand new Windows 2022 server. So as you can see, it's a pretty straightforward process, very easy. Again, in this example, I showed you how to do Windows, but you can put pretty much any operating system uh, on this 
So yeah, I hope this video was helpful to you. If you liked it, please click on the like button. And if you want to see more of my videos, please subscribe for my channel. Thanks for watching.